China and Asia and China. And um, in, in, most of us noticed that 2014, for, for the first time, it seemed that global CO2 emissions had increased, uh, stalled, and, and this was to a large extent attributed to the fact that in China, coal consumption actually fell for the first time in, 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 in decades. It fell by about three percentages last year, and it's continued falling in the first quarter of this year. Now, uh, does this, Goy, does this mean that, is this the, the, the result of of ambitious climate policy in China, or are there, are there other things lurking behind these positive developments? Yeah, well, thank you, Carla. Um, I started the timer to make sure that I don't talk this bloody thing more than five minutes. So the answer to that question is, uh, yes, uh, we are seeing a peak, or co-peak, and many of us, including myself, I actually believe China is soon going to reach a cold peak, if not already. Um, but uh, which, I say which it's not. Which must be dramatic in terms of changing preconditions for climate negotiations. Oh yes, yeah. certainly send some confidence to the Paris as we talked about this morning. Uh, but uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's primarily uh, this uh, uh, miraculous happening is the effect of climate or environment policies per se, uh, because it certainly helped. But it's a combination of China's uh, overcapacity crisis, no less, and combined with somebody called air pucklups in China, uh, the horrendous air pollution issues publicized since 2003. I think those combined has uh, accelerated China's coal consumption reduction. Uh, but what I really actually want to talk about as this one A-list policy example and for our later discussion is something called the One Belt, One Road uh, Initiative, as Chinese call it. I'm sure many of you have heard the Asian Investment, uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank or even heard the New Development Bank, or some even have heard the, the Silk Road Fund. Uh, but I bet a few of you have heard this thing called One Belt, One Road. And, uh, and increasingly, I like it. Some call it BAR, the BAR Initiative. So this some sort of new stimulus package? It, well, yes or no? No, I cannot control. Yes. <laughs> so if you look at the, where, the, where the largest bar is, this is it. This is the one belt is referred to an uh, economic development belt along Asian Silk Road inland. And uh, the one road is referred to the Chinese called the 21st century maritime Silk Road. So that's the one road, one belt. But, you know, without worry about all the complexity of that, simply what this is, is a massive infrastructure investment project in the coming 10, 15, 20 years that will connect the East Asia to East Africa to Europe. Uh, and just to give you a size of this thing, say, People are talking about the infrastructure investment in this area is eight trillion something. In the Asian country again, uh, alone, some numbers say from 2011 to 2020, that's 1.5 trillion investment in this. And the Chinese has had all this driven, the new set of the, in, the, the international financial institutions to set up as a mean to this end. It's all set up to finance the one road, one belt. This looks like a big risk for new emissions down the line, or? Yes, I have 37 seconds to, uh, <laughs> to say that the whole thing about this is to say this is the real deal. This is massive. 
This is, uh, I assure you, will be the lips of everybody to talk about this very soon. This can't go either way. This can't go green. This can't go brown. This can repeat the Chinese miracle economically and also at the same time in terms of the speed that we have increased our own per capita carbon emission. If that happens in this area, which is 4.4 billion people, and you can do the quick math, and then forget about any climate agenda. So this is the, <laughs> this is the China-Pakistan economic uh, corridor that the Chinese president has signed the deal with a price tag of $46 billion just last month. And look at this. This 80% is investment on energy. Look at the little car. Oh, oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. That just shows the risk. Stand up. <laughs> That just shows there's potential risk. Uh, so those are little cars are all coal-fired power plants. We Chinese know how to build them. We even know how to build the most clean coal-fired power plants. But my friend, clean coal is still coal. Uh, <laughs> and and just to end that up is the last one. So this can easily also go green because. China, the overcapacity is not only in those areas. We're also in wind, we're also in solar power, we also know how to build high-speed rail train. And all those are in the bar. So the bar can very much also be green. I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, great. Come and join us. Uh